Hello, and welcome to A Gross of Physics. Today is day 53, where we'll begin our discussion about circular motion. Now, we just finished the dynamics section, which deals with forces. And as we know, F equals MA. And what's important about F equals MA is that the force is always going to point in the direction of the acceleration. So when we have a net force and the force is to the right, that means the acceleration is moving to the right. We could have multiple forces acting on a single object, but the net force will determine the direction that the object will move. Now, that being said, circular motion throws that on its head because we have a situation where the force is not going to be related to the direction of motion. In fact, we have forces that keep objects moving in circles that don't point in the direction of their motion. So F equals MA is not going to work in the traditional sense. So what we're going to have to do is talk about a new type of acceleration. And that acceleration is actually called centripetal acceleration. Now many people have heard of centrifugal acceleration or centrifugal forces. Now those forces are fictitious and they effectively um, explain away why things appear to be thrown outward when they are uh, inadvertently um, moving in a, in a circular manner. For example, if a car turns left and a person hits their head against the passenger side window, well, they would often blame the centrifugal force pushing them outward. Last chapter, we learned that that was actually inertia that was doing it. So the object was actually traveling in a straight line, being your head, and the car was moving in front of your head as it turned. So you were just merely moving forward. Now the car itself was traveling in a circular path. And that circular path was due to the centripetal force pushing towards the center of the circle. In fact, in this case, friction would be the centripetal force. Now, the centripetal acceleration always acts towards the center of a circle. And the word centripetal means center seeking. So when we have a centripetal acceleration, it's an acceleration that seeks the center of the circle, center seeking. Now, that being said, the problem we have with our traditional equations is that we often deal with velocities and the velocities deal with displacements. Now, when you travel in a circle, what's going to happen is you are going to have a displacement of zero. And that would effectively cause us to have a velocity of zero as well. So what we're going to need to use is not the vectors in this case, but instead the scalar version of speed, which is speed. So we're not going to have to worry about the direction of the speed when dealing with centripetal acceleration. In fact, because it's centripetal, it will always act to the center of the circle. So if we're traveling in a circle, uh, counterclockwise, let's say, the acceleration will always point towards the center. Now that effectively will mean that the centripetal force will also act in the direction of the center of the circle. Now that being said, we need to show why it points to the center. And in fact, it has to do with vector addition. The velocity is always going to be tangent to the circle. So velocity is going to point a, a, towards the circle tangently. So if we're traveling in a counterclockwise direction and we're on the right side of the circle, the velocity will actually be up. If we're at the top of the circle, and of course we're looking down above the circular motion of let's say the car, what's going to happen is the velocity will point to the left. If we're on the left side of the circle, the velocity will point down. And if we're at the bottom of the circle, you would be um, experiencing a velocity forward, which would be to the right. So in every one of those four cases, the velocity is pointing tangent to the circle, whereas the centripetal acceleration is pointing inward. Now the velocity is forward and the centripetal acceleration is inward. Those two directions are mutually perpendicular to one another. Now if we're talking about vectors, that would mean that they are independent. So I would like to show you why the acceleration is pointing to the center. And basically what we need to do is take two snapshots of time. We have to take the velocity at point one and the velocity at point two. And we have to find the change in velocity. 
Well, anytime we have change, we're taking V2 minus V1. Well, V2 would be the second velocity, tangent to the circle at a certain point. V1, on the other hand, would then be the opposite direction from where it normally points. And the reason that's the case is because we're subtracting. Remember, a vector always points in the direction it points in unless it's negated. If it's negated, it's going to point in the opposite direction. So in this case, what we have is two velocities, one pointing in a certain direction, one pointing in the opposite direction from where it normally points because it's subtracted. And if we find the change in velocity, we'll actually point to the center. And I'm going to show you on the whiteboard an example of that to make that more clear. Now that being said, we're always going to know the direction of a centripetal acceleration and it's going to point to the center. So we don't have to worry about the vector velocity anymore. Instead, we can look at speed. Now the other characteristics of circles are a few. And the ones that we're typically familiar with are the radius, the diameter, and the circumference. And of course, the circumference is based on the radius or the diameter, depending upon the equation you use. If you uh, have diameter, it will be pi d. And if you have the radius, it will be 2 pi d. Or 2 pi r, I'm sorry. That being said, the circumference will be important as we move forward in the in this section of circular motion. Now, getting to um, an equation, what, it's in, what we're dependent upon is both the speed and the radius. So the centripetal acceleration equation is v squared over r. Now we denote centripetal acceleration with an a sub c, and that depicts centripetal. Some people will call it circular, circular acceleration, which we need to know is centripetal, center seeking. That being said, we have a c is v squared over r to determine the actual value. Remember, our, tr our traditional equations all have vectors. The v in this case is actually going to be a scalar. It's going to be the speed. So if we know the speed of the object and the radius of the circle, we can find the centripetal acceleration. And that's how we're going to be able to calculate any time we need to find the centripetal acceleration. We're going to use the equation v squared over r. The direction doesn't matter in this case because we already know that it's going to point to the center. Now, I'm going to show you a sample problem using v squared over r, maybe 1, maybe 2. And what we'll do is use the whiteboard for that. But for today, the important thing to note is that centripetal acceleration always points to the center of the circle. The velocity is tangent to the circle. And in order to calculate the centripetal acceleration, we're going to have to use v squared over r. Thank you. When discussing centripetal motion, it's important to realize that when you have circular motion, the acceleration is always going to point to the center. And we denote it as an A sub C for centripetal acceleration. Some people use AC circular acceleration. But the reality is the word is centripetal, center seeking. Now, the acceleration may be inward, but as an object travels, and in this case we'll make the tra object travel counterclockwise, the velocity is going to travel tangent to the circle at each point. Now, tangent means it points along the circle, touching it only once at that point, and doesn't cut through. Now what's important to realize about that is that these two are perpendicular. So the acceleration and the velocity are perpendicular. Now acceleration and velocity are vectors. So we can treat them as separate problems if we need to later on. Now the question that we have is why is this triple acceleration pointing to the center? And I'm going to cover that next. All right. The nuances of centripetal acceleration stem from the fact that the acceleration always points to the center of the circle. So no matter where the object is in the circular path, the acceleration always points centripetally. 
Now remember, centripetal means center seeking. So century is center, pull, seeking. So then the question remains, why does it point in the center? Well, if we go back to our discussion of acceleration earlier in the course, acceleration was change in velocity over change in time. And remember, acceleration is a vector. Now, in this case with centripetal acceleration, we already know the direction is inward. So the direction component of the centripetal acceleration um, is already taken care of. What we need to do is find the magnitude. Well, if we look at the velocity, the velocity is always going to be tangent to the circle. So as it moves around in a counterclockwise direction in this case, what you would see is that the velocities are always um, tangent. And we're looking at four points in the journey. If we were to look at every single point, what you have is a number of tangent lines that ultimately create that circular path in the first place. So what we can actually do is take each velocity and find the change in velocity, and that will give us the direction. All right, well, what's the change in velocity? It's V final minus V initial. So here's what we can do. We can take a path, and what I'll do is I'll start down here and I'll draw that tangent. And then I'll look at a time that's not too far in the future. I don't want to go to this quarter time. I'm going to go to a point a few moments later. And that's going to be our tangent line there. So this is going to be VI, and this is going to be VF. Well, if we're looking for the change in velocity, we're going to do VF minus VI. Well, remember, negative vectors just mean they point in the opposite direction. And if we want to know the direction, we need to draw them tip to tail. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to draw VF as close to the same direction as I could, that way. Now the negative VI, instead of pointing to the right, is going to point to the left. So this is VF, and this is negative VI. Now once again, how do you find the resultant? Well, the resultant is back from the origin to the end point. There's our resultant. And the resultant will be, in this case, the change in velocity. Well, if I take this vector and I place it in the midpoint of the two time periods, we get the change in velocity to point to the center. Now, if we know the time period, that will give us the acceleration. Now, of course, we can't use velocity, so we have to use speed and then the, the radius. And the bottom line is, this just shows how it points to the center. So effectively, we need to use the tip to tail method of two times that are close together. And we draw that in the midpoint between the two, and it points in the center. So the change in velocity is actually center seeking, because if we look at any two time intervals that are really small, the difference in the change in velocity points directly to the center. Now, instead of doing this for every problem, we know that that's the case, and we're able to um, just realize that centripetal means center seeking. So anytime we have centripetal acceleration, it's going to point to the center of the circle. All right, let's look at a sample problem dealing with centripetal acceleration. Now remember, our equation for centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. So we need to know the speed, and we need to know the radius of the circle. So we have a car traveling along a highway, and it's going to exit the highway uh, using an exit ramp. And it's going to travel at 45 miles per hour. And the ramp has a radius of it says 75 meters. So we want to find the centripetal acceleration. Now, of course, the only problem with this is that we have miles per hour, so we need to convert. So 45 miles per hour, one mile, 1609 meters, and one hour, 
is 3600 seconds. So let's see what we get. 45 times 1609 divided by 3600. 45 times 1609 divided by 3600. I hit 360 is 20.1 meters per second. So it merely becomes a case of taking the 20.1 and dividing it by 75, but don't forget to square it. So 20.1 squared divided by 75, and I have an acceleration of 5.4 meters per second squared. Now what direction does it point in? Well, inward or toward the center. But as soon as you say centripetal, that direction is implied.